everyone. My name is John Hadley. I'm a member of the Board of Selectmen and also of the Fisk Committee. Two of our goals this year has been to find a permanent home for the Senior Center and also find a safe and secure home for the police station. Over the next few weeks, we will have eight informational meetings around town. They will be posted on our website and also on the electronic sign in the center of town. I'm here today to introduce Jack Curran, who is a member of the Council on Aging, who will walk you through the Senior Center presentation. Uh, thanks, John. I will now uh, present a, uh, an overview, a proposal to purchase the Bethlehem Bible Church for the town for a Senior Center. Just by way of introduction, what makes a community successful? One important measure is how well it meets the needs of its citizens in all stages of their lives. Thanks to advances in nutrition and public health, we're living longer than ever before, so much so that by the year 2030, on a national basis, one in five of us will be 65 years of age or older. It's been called a gray tsunami. West Boylston is not immune to these demographic changes. In the year 2000, the population of the town was 5,326. 1,308 citizens met the definition of being a senior citizen, that is, over the age of 60. That constituted 24% of the population. Ten years later, in 2010, of a population of 6,691, 1,769 were over the age of 60, so that was 26%. The next age group of 50 plus is uh, 1,320 individuals, uh, that makes up 20%. So you can see that the population is growing in terms of the uh, senior citizen number. And just as a further point, the number of people living to age 90 and beyond on a national basis has tripled in the past three decades. Originally, senior centers served primarily as nutritional sites, places where people could go to have something to eat. However, it wasn't long before these sites came to play multiple roles. They evolved into local hubs that connected seniors to social, economic, and educational resources that enhanced the quality of their lives. Our goal is to create a place for opportunities. By promoting health, wellness, and engagement, age-friendly communities can support older adults in avoiding ill health, disability, and other limitations associated with aging. This in turn supports older adults in remaining more independent and engaged with needs that are less costly for themselves, for their families, and for society. Our current senior center is housed in a space that in effect is an industrial warehouse building. There's no windows in the main spaces. There's inadequate fire egress, according to code. There are unsafe floor raised pumps, depressed floor drains. There is not a working kitchen. There's no control over heating or air conditioning. There's no access to outdoor amenities. The senior center does not have control over the building they work in. The staff at the senior center have spruced it up as much as possible. Still, it is anything but a welcoming environment. As the old expression goes, you can't put a shine on a sneaker. And actually, to use a football analogy from Coach Belichick of the New England Patriots, it is what it is. There are unsafe floor conditions. There's a picture that shows the depressed, uncovered floor drains. There's also a picture of the director's office, which serves also as a storage room. The uh, next slide uh, shows the exterior entry as, uh, again, being anything but what you would call a welcoming site. So limitations on the current senior center are that it cannot have large groups of people for functions. The center has had to turn away people for events. The limited space also means that we have to schedule classes and activities separately versus having dedicated spaces for specific functions. Kitchen pipes flood about once a month due to improper materials and construction. There's a lack of storage space, which requires, again, that the office be used as a storage center. The rent for our space in the building is $36,750 that the town pays annually at the 127 Hartwell Street location. The current lease ends July 2016. If the owner at that time were to decide to rent to another tenant or increase the rent, that would present a problem for today's seniors, in effect uh, making them homeless as far as a center goes. The Bethlehem Bible Church is located on 307 Lancaster Street, that is Route 110. It is 2.4 miles distance from the town common. The present senior center is 1.8 miles from the town common, uh, six-tenths of a mile less. 
the 120 Prescott Street, the mixed building, 1.7 miles from the town common. The next slide shows several pictures, both the exterior and interior of the Bethlehem Bible Church. A description of the building is 12,000 square feet with existing office and classroom space in large space for assembly. There are two floors. There's an elevator lift. It's handicap accessible. There are restrooms, one for both uh, men and women, which are handicap accessible. There's a five acres plus or minus of land. The parking lot has equivalent space for about 100 vehicles. There are building improvements and renovations and site issues, which of course would need to be addressed. The building could be used for additional uh, purposes by the town. It could be used by town and community groups. It could possibly serve as a site for future town meetings. It could serve for an, as an emergency shelter if there are a need during course of storms or power outages in town. It could be available as a rental by individual groups. Youth groups could use it, scouts and sports groups. And if the state were to approve, it could be used possibly as an election site in the future. There are needs that the church could meet that we presently do not have opportunities to fulfill. It's a warm, welcoming environment. It could be a drop-in center in effect. There's a working kitchen that could be used for pancake breakfasts, cooking classes, after-school programs, men's programs, healthy eating, guest chefs. There was a space for larger events. There's multiple programs that could be run at one time because of their being the opportunity for dedicated spaces. The visiting nurse could have his or her own office. It'd be a friendlier building for intergenerational programs. There's a garden and patio area. There's an art room with sink and storage. One example of, of a recent building is the Northborough Senior Center, which is a building of approximately 14,500 square feet at a cost of $5.9 million. Westminster built its senior center with space of 7,400 square feet, but at a cost of $3 million. Communities currently building new senior centers or have been approved for new centers are Sterling, which is building a center 6,450 square feet for $2.71 million. Hubbardston, which is building a building of 6,000 square feet for $2.1 million. In conclusion, seniors in this community have spent a lifetime of working, raising families, paying taxes, and investing in West Boylston. They deserve strong support from their communities. They need a place for opportunities to share, to be active and engaged. We cannot meet those expectations with our current limited space and the growing number of consumers. In Massachusetts, the life expectancy is 80.7 years, more than two years longer than the national average. As more people live longer, well into their 80s and 90s, senior centers will need to expand the scope of programs to meet varying needs. While the oldest consumer may require adult daily supports, younger consumers will be looking for programs to sharpen their work and cognitive skills and improve their physical well-being. So in summary, the Bethlehem Bible Church is better suited for use as a senior center as it will give us the needed space as well as the opportunity for extra space above that for a community center. This process makes financial sense comparing rental costs paid by taxpayers to cost of ownership. Purchasing the church property does not come off the tax revenue. There have been several endorsements of this proposal. The Town of West Boylston's Board of Selectmen, Facilities Improvement Implementation Strategic Committee known as the FISP Committee, the Council on Aging, the Friends of the Council on Aging, and the West Boylston Housing Authority. Thank you for your attention to this uh, presentation. Thank you, Jack. And this is Officer Jay Dugan, who will walk us through the police station presentation. Thank you, John. And as John said, my name is Jay Dugan. I am the police department's representative on the FISP committee. And I'm also a 47-year town resident uh, of West Boylston. I'm here providing information tonight to help uh, get your support for the building of a new police station. The need for the police station is something that has been going on for well over 22 years. Uh, prior building committees that have done studies, the town has paid for studies, and all of the information over these last 20 years has been compounded to get an effective, workable building that not only encompasses the police department now, but will also allow us to have future expansion uh, for services that will be required from the police department. The major need is officer safety. Officers currently 
have to work in, a, in situations in confined space. The booking room is an extremely dangerous location in the building and it's very, very small. It's a former closet. One of the other needs is there's an extreme danger to the safety of the public. Many times when citizens are in our building, because of the locations of our booking room, prisoners are required to be walked past citizens, children, and other people just waiting for services that are provided by the police department as well as the fire department. With this new building, it would cure a lot of the non-compliance with our existing state regulations, such as the American Disabilities Act, uh, rules requiring uh, handling and transporting of prisoners, uh, prisoner control, allowing us to keep males, females, and juveniles separate from each other, which would put us in compliance with the laws and the regulations by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. With the new building in design, we could protect things and items that were purchased by the town, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment. Right now, we pay to have our prisoners housed at different locations. We have to transport our prisoners to different agencies that have cells to detain prisoners, which we currently do not have. There are a lot of deficiencies related to our current working conditions. We have no ability to store evidence or large quantities of evidence. Proper interrogations aren't being conducted because of the lack of an interrogation room as well as an interview room. There are requirements that require us to record uh, both video and audio of our interviews and interrogations. We lack a proper storage facility for files for cases, uh, arrests, and reports that are done by officers. Lacking storage for our equipment, cruises, radar units, equipment carried by the offices every day can't be stored in that building. We have to currently use other locations such as the highway department and spare offices over there. The current day-to-day -day operations can't be conducted in this location uh, that we're in at this time. Right now our booking room is a former closet. It's a very small area and when an officer has to encounter a prisoner or engage with a prisoner, there's no space for them to safely encounter and engage the prisoner, exposing them to unnecessary dangers. These are current booking rooms of the Auburn Police Department and the Sterling Police Department, which are both fairly new constructed areas. The Sterling Police Department has proper spacing, distance, uh, keeping prisoners away from the electronic equipment, proper storage of evidence. You can securely fasten a prisoner at a safe distance away from the officers. In our current location, prisoners are, are currently secured to a steam pipe, which is bolted to the concrete wall. The way they are right now, they have access to hundreds of thousands of dollars of computer equipment, breathalyzers, fingerprint machines, department computers. Many times these items have had to be replaced because of violent confrontations with prisoners, uh, intoxicated prisoners that are non-compliant, falling down, uh, knocking items off of shelves and countertops, breaking them, and requiring them to be replaced. Uh, this is also the exact same place where we would put a person who is a mental health detainee that needs to be held until they can be transported to a proper facility. Again, you can see the tight space with the officer in the background with another person inside there. If the person is to become violent or non-compliant, there's not much space for the officer to encounter or engage that subject. This is an area that does have proper and safe distances where an officer can encounter and engage with a, a defendant or mental health detainee or an intoxicated person. Multiple defendants create a very large problem uh, at this current facility. If a police officer makes a multiple person arrest where they arrest two, three or four people, we lack the proper space to detain them. We only have space to put one person onto the pipe onto the wall, requiring the other person to sit in a chair on the outside or in the back seat of a cruiser for extended periods of time. And this presents an extreme danger to the officer where that chair could be used as a weapon against them, it could aid in their escape, and it could injure the officer. With proper cells, it would allow us to detain prisoners or detainees in a safe location so that you could deal with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis and not have to watch and protect yourself from multiple assaults. Currently, there are no bathroom facilities located near our booking room now. So if a prisoner needs to use the bathroom, they have to be handcuffed, walked up two flights of stairs into the main lobby of the police department. Uh, this main lobby is where citizens sit while they are waiting for police officers, firefighters, EMTs, or other public safety assistance at this police station. Many times prisoners are walked by witnesses, victims of crimes, and due to the current case laws, it jeopardizes our cases where there's contact between the defendant 
and a victim. When you have to walk the prisoner up the stairs, a lot of times they're intoxicated, they're violent, and they're non-compliant. And this could provide a very dangerous situation. One of the public health emergencies that are in this building is the asbestos. There's asbestos located in many of the construction materials, specifically the ceiling, and, and there's asbestos that is used in the windows throughout the entire building. Windows have a, a sealant around the, the glass, which has an asbestos-based material. This same material has been located in, in other schools and buildings that have actually been closed for health reasons while they had to do the removal of the asbestos. And this is throughout our entire police and fire department building. Downstairs in the booking room is also what's referred to as the sally port where an officer would drive his cruiser in to take the prisoner out. In this area, there is all of our electrical, phone and radio equipment. If a prisoner is to become free and try and break away from an officer, they have the ability to, to destroy this equipment, basically making the police department and the dispatcher untouchable from the public. You wouldn't be able to phone in, call in emergencies, or get in touch with them during uh, a situation. We also use this area to, to store equipment, hand tools, shovels, washing materials, brooms, spare tires, cleaning supplies. Once a prisoner is, is done with the booking process, we have to rely on other agencies to house our prisoners. Right now, we use the Worcester Police Department, the state police, or possibly area towns that have booking cells. This is a burden to us because a lot of times their cells are already full and they can't house our prisoners. So many times an officer will be required to find out if there is a place to store a person prior to to making an arrest. This also adds an ex expense to the town. We have to pay these agencies to house our prisoners. At times, some of the outside agencies require a West Boylston police officer to sit with the prisoner while they sit in their cells awaiting bail or for their arraignment in the court at the next sitting of the court. This could be in an average of $407 per shift, which could run 24 to 48 hours, depending on the time of day that the person is arrested. There's also a $75 fee that has to be paid to those agencies to hold our prisoners. Without cells, many times officers are forced to issue the defendant a summons in lieu of an arrest. In lieu of an arrest, you lose a lot of abilities. You're unable to get fingerprints, unable to conduct interviews, DNA, uh, booking photographs. These are all items that are used that can help identify people of other crimes in our town or in other towns or communities where these prisoners have committed crimes. So what this does is it, it puts dangerous criminals back on the street that should be held until the next appearance in court where they can be seen in front of a judge. It exposes our residents to further crimes, other violence, potential B&Es, larcenies, or assaults if they are to be released back to the community. With a proper facility, officers would be able to perform proper interviews where you could be both video and audio taped and presented to the courts for evidence. You could interview multiple suspects or victims at different times. The preferred method of court is to have these both video and audio recorded. Many cases have been lost in court because statements, confessions, and interviews were not properly recorded and documented. You can see uh, several interview rooms. Both of these interview rooms are in the new facility at the Sterling Police Department where they have a small interview room in the booking area where defendants can be booked in a secure, locked area. And then there's another interview room, which is directly off the lobby, where victims could be come in and be interviewed uh, and give statements to police officers. With the current working conditions, there's an extreme liability to the town of West Boylston. There's an increased danger of preventable injuries. Officers are forced to place themselves into dangerous situations where they have to get extremely close and personal with the defendants. If an officer is to get injured, it creates a very large cost to the town of West Boylston. They need to pay the police officer his salary while he is out injured on duty. It potentially decreases the staffing level that the town requires to have patrolling the streets. The salary is approximately $407 if an officer needs to fill a shift where an officer is injured. Again, with the current working conditions, citizens are exposed to the movement of defendants, currently unable to properly secure defendants where officers could become injured. There's a potential for lawsuits from defendants because they are not properly secured, where they could be in the backseat of a cruiser for an extended period of time, handcuffed to a chair, and this is going to expose the town to civil rights violations. Violations. In our existing building conditions, we currently work in approximately six rooms to conduct the day-to-day -day business for the police department, and this is run as a business. The first slide shows the view of the hallway. Picture on the top right is the chief's office. The bottom left-hand corner 
is the area that we refer to as the squad room, the report room, uh, training room, and locker rooms. The fourth office on the bottom right is the sergeant's office where interviews are conducted at this time. The chief's office is approximately a 12 by 12 office area. In this space, he does not have the ability to, to hold uh, proper meetings where he can review documents, traffic safety plans, or conduct interviews. The next slide is the detective's office. This office was a closet. It's approximately an eight by 10 space. At this time, the detective uh, needs to conduct all of his reports in here, store rape files, death investigations, secure files that the general police department would not have access to. They need to be in a secure location within the building. The third office, as I stated, this is the sergeant's office. This office is also used as an interview room, storage of files, firearms are located in a closet, in a locked closet in this area, overflow of evidence, as well as spare files or overflow of files that can't be stored in the front office. The fourth room is approximately a 20 by 16 area. This area is our locker room, the meeting room, the lunch break room, a training room, storage of spare equipment, and a report writing stations where officers conduct the day-to-day -day reports, accident reports, and incident reports. The fifth office is the administrative assistance office. This area is used to store arrest reports, accident reports, firearms applications, fingerprints, and many other, other reports that are needed to be stored by the police officers. We compared building a new building versus remodeling the existing space. With the new building, renovating an existing building would require us to come into compliance with existing laws and require major structural modifications um, if they were to undertake renovations. With the proposed location, this area is already owned by the town of West Boylston and the town has no other plans for this location. Over the past two years, these building plans have been scaled back to optimize uh, and accommodate the absolute needs of the police department. There are no excessive bells and whistles in this plan. With this plan, we've taken into consideration future expansion and storage of files and evidence. With this new building, Building, it will be within ADA compliance and there is no need for an elevator because this building is on one level. The proposed building location is at 141 Sterling Street. This area is directly beside the Rockledge apartment complex in the Horseshoe Drive neighborhood on Route 12. The next several slides show the proposed conceptual design of a new building. As you can see, it is a single story building, all accessible from the first floor. The next slide shows entrances off of Route 12 with the building located on that property, showing proper parking for the public, the police officers, as well as uh, location of several of the other items that would be required for a police station. This final slide for the building uh, shows proposed or potential use of space within that building. And what this does is it allows us to see exactly how it would be laid out shows all of the things that are required by law. Uh, booking rooms, the proper location of male, female, and juvenile cells, safe and secure locations that interviews could be conducted, prisoners could be transported to, uh, and it shows a proper use of the building. The next slide shows the Sterling Police Department's booking room as it sits now. In this area, you can see that there is a safe distance uh, for officers that they could uh, book prisoners. They would not have to be forced to get into dangerous positions with them. They can securely fasten prisoners in an area where they could be spoken to and asked interview questions and not put themselves within reaching distance, allowing themselves to get hurt. The next picture on the right shows proper working stations where officers could conduct their reports. It has, shows proper storage for files uh, where, that are needed for court, um, accident reports, restraining orders, or if the elder abuse forms that are required for us to store and keep on hand for officers to do the day-to-day -day operations. In the new facility, there's a location where we could conduct trainings. There's a, an area set aside as a training room where we could conduct interviews, hold training classes to keep officers up to date on current laws, trends, and training classes that are offered throughout the Commonwealth. With a proper squad room, you have adequate space uh, where you could perform mission briefings, you could do day-to-day -day roll calls, you could hold larger meetings uh, where officers have to conduct investigations that are private and secure away from the general public. With these locations, it won't disrupt the day-to-day -day operations, keeping civilians away from uh, sensitive information that's held by the police department. In summary, the need is urgent and the liability to the town is real. It's not a matter of if, but when somebody gets hurt or the town gets sued. No building in town is suitable at present and none can be easily retrofitted to meet the needs in a cost-effective manner for the town of West Boylston. Legal compliance may be forced upon the town in the very near future if we are not brought up to the current 
laws and standards required for a police station. Currently, uh, the safety of the officers and the public is at risk with our present facility. Lastly, the asbestos throughout the building is a very serious concern. This same asbestos has forced the closing of several schools and other buildings. We ask that you support the West Boylston Police Department. Thank you. Okay, we're now gonna go over the financial impact of building a new police station and purchasing the Bethlehem Bible Church for our new senior center. We're currently paying rent of $36,570 per year, including utilities uh, for the senior center. It is estimated that the construction of a new senior center uh, for a 10,000 square foot building would be about $300 per square foot or $3 million. The cost to purchase and renovate the Bethlehem Bible Church came in at around $1.3 million or $108 per square foot. So he thought it was best to pursue the existing property, the Bethlehem Bible Church. The purchase of this church is going to have no impact on our tax rate as the uh, church is currently a nonprofit that does not pay any property tax. There are several communities in the area that are, are now building or have recently built uh, senior centers. The town of Sterling uh, has a senior center, a uh, little over 6,000 square feet. That was $420 per square foot. Uh, the Westminster Senior Center was $405 per square foot. Uh, the North Borough Senior Center is a larger senior center, uh, also over $400 per square foot. So our cost of $300 per square foot uh, was lower than uh, buildings that have actually been built and is still substantially higher than uh, purchasing the building. As I stated earlier, the purchase price is expected to be uh, $990,000 and with renovations and moving expenses, the total borrowing will be $1.3 million or less. So we're looking to do a debt exclusion for 20 years and this would cost the average taxpayer with a $250,000 home about $28 a year. Uh, the renovations that need to be done to the Bethlehem Bible Church for a senior center are mostly cosmetic. Uh, there is uh, a new kitchen that needs to go in, a, uh, a new drive parking lot and driveway, and uh, there is some demolition for a bathroom and the baptismal uh, platform, but most of the other stuff is just cosmetic uh, stuff, not very much structural uh, impact to the building. So the operating cost of the new senior center, as you can see, are estimated to be uh, $31,600 per year. So for the police station, the original estimates that they received were $3.4 million to, to construct a new police station. Uh, the police did a design revision and with optimization, they were able to get this price reduced to $2.9 million. And this does include a contingency of 18%. And as with the Bethlehem Bible Church, it has no impact on tax revenues as the land is currently owned by the town. So the construction costs, are, as I stated, are expected to be $2.9 million. Again, we'd be looking to do a 20-year debt exclusion. Uh, and this would uh, cost the average taxpayer with a $250,000 home about $62 per year. The police station operating costs, uh, additional to the budget, are estimated to be uh, $49,500 in the new building. So the capital projects, uh, I have a, a breakdown of what the uh, costs for the projects would be uh, per $100,000. Uh, break, breakdown is for five years. You can see we have it for the senior center and the police station. Uh, the initial cost uh, in the first fiscal year would be a little bit over $45, gradually decreases. The 15th year, it's down to 30. And then in the 20th year, obviously, it'll be paid off. It goes to zero. The good news is that we have expiring debt. First year cost of the new debt, the police station debt service is 243,000. The senior center debt service is 126,000 or 378,000 for the two buildings. In FY16 and FY17, we've got $290,000 of debt coming off the books. So the net increase to our tax rate over fiscal year 17 for both projects is only $88,000. The next slide shows what the tax rate increase is for both projects 
Starting in FY17, as I said, it's $88,000. After 10 years, the borrowings uh, essentially become uh, a neutral with, an, with only $4,000 more debt to service, and then it continues to go down, so our tax rate after the 10 years due to the debt exclusion will be the same as it is now uh, for that line item. Uh, most importantly, the one-year borrowing costs for both buildings net of the expiring debt for the average taxpayer in the first year, which is the, the worst year, would only be $26 per household. And this is based on a 4% interest rate, which is a very conservative estimate, so that number could actually go down. The last is the impact on the operating costs. There is a, a net change to the senior center would actually eliminate $5,000 from our operating budget, as we have the elimination of the rent that offsets the additional operating expenses. The added operating expenses for the police station as stated, were $49,500. So the total cost additions to our uh, operating budget would be $44,500 for bringing on both buildings. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. The Board of Selectmen and the Fisk Committee uh, would like your support on these projects. Uh, it's a fiscally responsible time to take on both of these projects. It will cost the average taxpayer $26 in the first year. Uh, so we really would ask for your support at both town meeting and the election uh, that will follow.